Howdy, Yacht Jacket fans, and welcome to the 2022 Yellow Jacket Football Show. I'm Carl Gurgis with a very pleased coach, James Gage. Your Jackets opened the 2022 season, coach, with a convincing 49 to nothing win over Aldine. Let me give you some quick numbers, and I know you know them, but I want our fans to know them. 410 rushing yards for the Jackets, defensively holding Aldine to 31 yards. That's nine yards per quarter. And if that wasn't enough, special teams kicked in early. Trenton Peterson caused an Aldine fumble on the opening kickoff. Jacket Manny Hernandez was Manny on the spot. And a few plays later, in fact, only one play, Deshaun Peterson for six yards. Full night program. Uh, that's about as good of a start as you can ask for. Uh, you know, uh, the excitement was there. The nerves were there. Uh, I told someone before the game we had 34 kids on our roster. That was their first ever varsity football game. And so uh, when two-thirds, over two-thirds of your team, it's, it's their first ever start to be able to, to come out and, you know, kind of have that fairy tale beginning. That was a that was kind of a way to calm the nerves. And then after that, our kids just played a phenomenal game. They did. And rushing, of course, the infantry is always a, a, a telling tale. If you rush the, with the football, if you do it on the ground, you're probably going to have a pretty good evening. Deshaun Peterson, 108 yards, seven totes. That's 15 yards per carry. Just a key, easy night for that young man. Dayton Hodson, Hodson, 91 yards on nine carries and a touchdown. Isaiah Vaughn, 72 yards, six carries and a touchdown. Ryan Munson, 53 yards and a touchdown. Ryan Garcia, 33 yards and a touchdown. And Braden Griffin, you kind of spread it around. Everybody got a touchdown. So, so Deshaun is our only returning guy. Uh, <laughs> you know, Cole Arndt uh, played the other night. He only had one carry. He was kind of uh, coming back from a little injury, so we kind of – put him on a limit on how much we were going to play him but uh and then Deshaun you know he got off to the great start and we got him out as quick as we could just to try to you know keep him healthy but uh you know Caden Hodson was sophomore yeah. fullback had a phenomenal night Isaiah Vaughn's first ever varsity game uh, Ryan Garcia first ever varsity game Munson Griffin all those guys that was their first ever varsity football game and so uh you know we didn't want to put too much pressure on one individual so we we went in saying hey we've got to be able to spread the ball out like we normally do and uh, just try to get everybody involved as early as we could and kind of again loosen those nerves a little bit but uh we're, we're not very deep at that position at, at the quarterback fullback running back position but the kids we have there we, we've got some seriously talented kids well, passing, you only needed a couple of passes. Griffin was two for three for 42 yards passing to Palmero on the receiving end of both of them. I think we could also sum it up just to say it was probably perhaps the most complete game that the Jackets have played since you've been here. We did. We, we played well, and, uh, you know, we, we, we've still got a lot of things we've got to get coached up and get corrected. We had 12 penalties, so, you know, that was kind of the main focus we had this week. we got to get that part cleaned up. But uh, we didn't have any turnovers on offense. That's the first time we've done that in a long time. We were – uh, seven possessions, seven touchdowns. Our eighth possession, we ended up taking a knee to finish the game. So super efficient offensively. Uh, and then defensively, you only give up nine yards per quarter. That's that's pretty dang good. You so, win a lot of ball games uh, that way. You know, and then obviously the turnover <laughs> and the, the, the opening kickoff, our, our kicker Austin Hill was seven for seven on, spe on, on PAT. PATs. So uh, yeah. all around good night for the Jackets. But like you said, probably the most complete game we've played since I've been here. Well, I know you've got some excellent film highlights, and we're going to see those in one moment, and we'll be back. Well, Coach, we're ready for some film highlights. I know you've got a few of them, and let's, uh, let's start right now. Let's look at them. So there's our offensive game summary uh, from Friday night. Again, 448 total yards, 410 yards rushing, uh, almost 12, play, 12 yards every time we snap the ball. And then, uh, again, it's super efficient throwing the ball. We're not going to throw it a lot, but that's kind of what we want. Uh, and then you see down there at the bottom, seven touchdowns. Again, the only time we didn't score the other night was when we were taking a knee. So... Anytime you have that type of production, you got a chance to win a football game. So here we are. This was the opening kickoff, first play of the season. Uh, again, I think nine kids on this kickoff team. This was their first ever varsity game. Uh, Trenton Peterson hustling down there, avoids the block, and then they try to set up a reverse. He hits the kid in the back. And then, like you said, Manny on the spot right there, Manny Hernandez jumping on the football. Uh, you know, we, we told them you, you probably had a chance to, to scoop and score there, but the biggest, you know, the most important thing is, is we possessed the ball, and then, like you said, the very next play we were able to score. So uh, what an awesome way to, you know, no pun intended, but to kick off the season right there. <laughs> All right, so same formations as last year. Not, not a whole lot's changed. And when you got Deshaun Peterson back there, you tend to try to get him the ball as much as you can. And 
uh, you know, he, he had a tremendous junior year, 1,200 yards rushing, second team all state. And, uh, he picked up right where he left off. And so this was his second carry of the game. And this was, I think, a 65 yard touchdown run. Uh, but he, he makes a nice cut right there to get into the open field. And then when he gets in the open field, he's, he's hard to tackle. And coach, he's, he's not only big, he's fast. He is. He's 6'2", 195, 200 pounds, and he's about a 4'6", 40 kid. So, uh, you know, he's strong, he's physical, and then he's got the speed on the back end too. But a uh, tremendous job up front right there. Bradley Ernesty at left tackle, Cole Ernst at the left running back, uh, kind of clearing the path for him right there. And then, again, he makes a little cut on the backside. And then uh, that's one thing he does really well. He has great vision and finds that little backside cut. And uh, when you got a guy that can find that yeah, cut right cut there, right there. Uh -huh. you know, and get his shoulder square, that's where the big plays come from. So you see the excitement from the guys running down the field. That's, that's what it's all about. So uh, kind of get the back end of this play. Uh, sit number 16, Braden Griffin, a junior, making his first ever start on varsity. Uh, this was in a 31-yard touchdown run. He ended up breaking a tackle uh, to get in the end zone. This was right before the half. So uh, I believe this made it 28 to nothing, uh, and then we were able to put one more in the, uh, before the, the half ended, but uh, he, he played a great game, and then Ryan Munson came in, played the second half, and he played a great game as well. You know, I was very pleased with both quarterback play the other night. So this is uh, Ryan now at quarterback number three. This is Coach Munson, our track coach. This is his son, uh, also coaches running backs for us. and. Uh, you know, he gets out in the open field. He, he has just enough speed. I told him you're a little bit faster than your dad probably was when he played here. But, uh, you know, this was, again, he was a JV quarterback a couple years ago. Uh, actually didn't play last year as a junior, decided he wanted to come back out as a senior. And uh, obviously we're excited that he's back out. And uh, what a special night that was for, for Coach Munson to be on the sideline with his son to see that first varsity touchdown. It was uh, pretty neat to see them embrace each other. He did a great job of, of – uh deceptive uh, handling of the ball. Watch how far he goes. He, he's line. a really good operator. He, he, Like I said, he was our JV quarterback a couple years ago and uh, really progressed as the year went on. And, and he understands the offense. Uh, he's not the fastest kid we have, but we tell him he doesn't need to be the fastest kid. If he'll just be a good operator and do what he's supposed to do, uh, he'll be successful at the position. So uh, again, reads it right, comes out, uh, and then just is able to, to use a little bit of his speed to get around the corner and, and, and get in the end zone. So the very starts for the for the quarterback. That's it. Got to have a good one. Well, coach, you pitched a uh, defensive shutout. So let's see some of the highlights for the big guys on D. All right, uh, defensive game summary right there. Uh, Thirty-six total yards allowed. You see the the zero yards rushing, uh, passing yards thirty-six, two forced fumbles, uh, and I think they only had four first downs, maybe five. So anytime you hold a team under five first downs, you're going to give yourself a chance to win the football game. So early on in the game right here, uh, they were trying to do some misdirection bootleg stuff. Uh, you know, they're trying to get their offense rolling. Uh, that sophomore, Caden Burgess, coming off the edge. He doesn't fall for the play action. Ends up getting on the quarterback right there, trips him up. Uh, he actually, I think, had two sacks on the night the other night. But uh, Caden played some last year as a freshman for us. So he's only a sophomore. Uh, Zane Bailey, 85 on the other end, is a sophomore. So, you know, we got two sophomores that are getting, playing some, some key snaps for us. So that's, uh, that's going to help us out in the future as well. But a great job. You know, not letting 75 get his hands on him right there and then uh, working up the field and, and able to get the quarterback down. All right, again, same bootleg, uh, same result, just a different player. This is number 36, Liam Binger, senior. Uh, Binger started some games for us last year as a junior, played outside linebacker. We've moved him to uh, defensive end this year. Uh, does a great job kind of getting an extension yeah. there on the, the number 75 again. Uh, and then again, works up the field, doesn't allow the quarterback to get out in the bootleg and, and kind of rodeos him down right there. But, uh, you know, B Binger's a physical kid. And so uh, anytime he has a chance to kind of jump on somebody like that, he's going to do it. So but he read it quite well. Oh, absolutely. And that was third down. They ended up having to punt from back inside their own five yard line. So uh, gave us great field position in a short field. So again, great job by our defense getting us a short field on offense right there. All right, so we kind of get a uh, little tag team sack here. Again, there's number 12, Kane Burgess, coming play side. And then number five, Cesar Lamelli, uh, comes right off the back side right there. And they both put pressure on the quarterback and get to him at the same time. So, uh, you know, we'll give credit to both of them for a half a sack, but it equals one full sack for the Jackets. And so, uh, again, we, we mixed up pressure the other night, and we ended up, you know, uh, forcing the quarterback to get rid of the ball early sometimes. But then we were able to get on him early enough to get him down, too. 
Well, obviously you had pretty good coverage in the defensive secondary, but really that was, like you say, the defensive lineman really made that play. And that was one thing. They, 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 didn't, they didn't make our secondary have to cover too long because we got quick pressure on him. So anytime you can get quick, quick pressure on him like that with your defensive line, that really helps you out in the back end as well. Good results. All right, so a uh, little toss there, try to just get the ball outside. And, uh, you know, they, we, we kind of plug the middle, so they, they try to get the ball outside a little bit. And then you see sophomore Jalen Peterson, who's actually Deshaun's younger brother, and the number 28, Trenton Peterson, who had the fumble on the opening kickoff. Three brothers playing on a Friday night. So what a, special, keep them. what a special night for mom and dad. But uh, Jalen Peterson, this hit right here actually ended up being the big hit of the week for our defense. And so... Uh, the sophomore kind of runs the alley right here. Uh, Zane Bailey puts pressure on him, 85, kind of gets him to turn his shoulders up field, gets enough, and then Jalen gets low and kind of WWE suplexes him. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's good to see a sophomore get in there and get physical. And we told him the other day, I said, he's used to being physical his whole life because he's having to fight with older brothers, you know, at the, at the dinner table. <laughs> so uh, that's nothing new for him to get in there and mix it up with them. Well, when he did his chance, he certainly did his part, and it was great. That Looks was it. good. This Friday evening at Memorial Stadium is going to be homecoming for your jackets. Another new Yellow Jacket opponent. You know a lot about them, too. Tell us a little about Cleveland. So Cleveland is it's north of, of Dayton and Mont Bellevue. Mm -hmm. I was at Barber's Hill from 2010 to 15, and uh, Cleveland was actually a small school 4A back then. And so within the last seven or eight years, they have grown to a 5A uh, or excuse me, from 5A to 6A now. They've got over 2,900 kids in their school. So it's one of the top growing mm -hmm areas in the whole state of Texas and so uh, they're going to come to us and and this kind of we we locked this game in about I don't know at the start of last year we we, we locked this game in and so uh, it was one of those we've never played each other and we said why not you know it's a little bit of a travel about an hour and 20 minutes but it's a new opponent gives our kids a chance to play somebody new so uh, we're excited and then obviously with it being homecoming this week right. uh, we're expecting a good crowd and uh, hopefully a good turnout. Well, it's 7 o'clock kickoff, sports fans, and with all the homecoming festivities and the Jackets will aim to capture win number two on the 2022 season before going on the road for their first game over to another new opponent, Beaumont United. Yeah, and so, uh, you know, we had three new opponents. We, we actually had Fort Bend Dulles scheduled for week three. And uh, Fort Bend Dulles ended up in a 19 district. So they have a district game week three. So we were scrambling, looking for games. And uh, the, the coach at Beaumont United called and said, hey, I, look, I heard you're looking for a game. And uh, at that point, we were, we were, we're the, 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 the barrel was thin. So we had to, <laughs> we, we had to look for somebody. And uh, it, it's a little bit of traveling. But you know what? It's, again, it's excitement. It's a new opponent. And uh, it'll be a good game to get us ready going into district in a few weeks. I can't weeks. think of another Beaumont opponent that we have played here at Alvin High School. So Could have. Oh, I know, I know Manville played Beaumont United last year okay. over here. But uh, that, that was obviously a 5A playoff yeah, game. But, right. but I don't know if Alvin's ever played a Beaumont school. So Well, it's a 7 p.m. kickoff. It's homecoming, as you said, Coach. Coach, uh, the Jackets will uh, aim to capture number two on the road for the 2022 season. And as you said, next week we'll go over to Beaumont United. But first place first, let's take care of Cleveland this coming Friday night, homecoming night. So we'll see you then, sports fans. Now, Carl, let me ask you a question. Did you have a birthday the other day? Happy birthday! You know, I did. I, I lose track of them. It, uh, it, was, uh, it was one of those uh, timely birthdays, a little over 50. Well, happy 50th birthday. Thank you. You know, we appreciate all your support and, and you know, want to give you a, a happy birthday shout out. So. Well, I, I appreciate it. I'll tell my wife that you, uh, you thought I was 50 and I appreciate that. <laughs> I will pass that on to her. Absolutely. So, and I think the, uh, the crew back here put together a graphic. They came up with the defensive player of the game this week. And uh, this week, the defensive player of the game actually goes to the whole defense. They, they gave it to the whole defense this week. Why not? You see that zero <laughs> right there? Uh, that's pretty impressive. No matter who you're playing, where you're playing, anytime you give up zero yards rushing, you're going to win the football game. So. Yeah, chances are you're going to do quite well. In fact, I don't think I can recall, you might too, in, in, in your coaching career that you've ever had a defense give up zero zero yards. Not that I can recall, but but that's pretty special right there. That's a pretty special uh, graphic. So uh, really proud of our defense, really proud of the offense, just really proud of all of our kids. Our, our freshman A team won, uh, our JV came away with the win, and so a uh, great way to start the season off. Friday night, 7 o'clock, folks. We'll see you there at Yellow Jacket Stadium, homecoming. Good luck to the Jackets, and good luck to you, Coach. Thank you. Jacket pride never dies.